I cheated, it's actually a magnetic drum key. What's up drum heads? And while we're on the topic of drum heads, I'd like to officially announce, I got endorsed by Ev, hit me in the face. I'm officially endorsing Evans drum heads. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody at Evans and Diodario for endorsing me and my channel. Every drummer needs drum heads and they've been so kind as to send me a box of new heads. Who doesn't like getting heads? Heads. I've actually been chatting with them for a while about trying their new UV coated heads. So let's open these up and swap some heads. So in the box, we've got a 10 inch UV1 coated, a 10 inch EC resonant, a 14 inch UV1 coated, a 14 inch UV2 coated, a 16 inch UV2 coated, a 16 inch EC resonant head, a 16 inch coated EMAD, I am stoked about this one. A 20 inch EMAD coated and a 20 inch EQ3 resonant. They've also included a sweet magnetic drum key and we got some t-shirts. So I'm basically gonna swap these heads and tell you a little bit about the heads and why I chose them. Uh, maybe show you how I tune a bit, but it's really nothing special. So for my rack tom, I got UV1s. These are basically single ply heads. I wanted to try single ply on my 10 inch tom because I've been playing two ply heads on my 10 for a while and I feel like I want it to sing a bit more. For those who don't know, basically a double ply head will give you more durability, but a little less sustain. So more of like a punchy rock kind of sound, I guess. And single ply heads are one ply. So <laughs> they're not as durable, but they'll ring for a bit longer. But now that we're endorsed, we don't care about durability, do we? Just kidding. For the snare, I get to choose between a UV1 or a UV2. I think I'm gonna try out the single ply head because I just want that open, sensitive, pingy snare sound again. A single ply head is basically what comes on any new snare drum that you buy. But you can't go wrong with the OG. In my opinion, a double ply head kind of takes away from the sensitivity of the snare wires. So like, if you're playing little quiet ghost notes, then it doesn't like activate the snare wires as well. That's just my opinion. Lately I've been rocking the HD Dry and I absolutely love these heads. They have all these little holes around the edge which basically lets the air escape and kind of gets rid of all the overtones that your snare produces and makes it sound dry. These terms, I don't, I don't really understand how something can sound dry. Dry. But that's what we call it. Now, I don't do anything special when I tune my snare. I finger tighten it like you're supposed to, then go around and just tighten the lugs as evenly as I can. I'm not a huge advocate for the star pattern thing because like Zach Grooves, I, I can't remember where I left off and then I just get lost. So I do my best. It's really not a big deal. The star pattern is just to make sure that the head is seated properly and evenly against the bearing edge. And if you tighten one side all the way, then you risk it being uneven and possibly warp your drum so maybe it is kind of important now I tune my snare pretty high so once I tighten all the lugs up then I crank the bottom head like crank that mofo so it sounds like a balloon about to pop Then I pretty much crank the top head too. It's easier to tune a snare to a higher tuning than a medium or low tuning. There's like more margin for error or something. If you tune to a medium pitch and some of the lugs aren't exactly tight, then you get those nasty overtones. But I feel like a high tuning just kind of hides it all. For the floor tom, I get to pick between a 16 inch UV2 and the holy grail, a 16 inch coated EMAD. I'm most excited for this one. I've used a clear EMAD on my floor tom before and it just sounded like a second kick drum. It was just like dead and fantastic. Never thought dead and fantastic would be used in a sentence together. We've also got EC resonant heads for the bottom of the toms. I rarely change my resonant heads. I probably should change them more often. It's not as important as the top heads because you're hitting the top heads, but I know it is important because if the bottom heads get stretched out over time, then you kind of start getting weird nasty overtones and it's more difficult to tune the drums. So I'm really stoked Evan sent me some, some new Rezo heads. And for the kick drum, you gotta have an EMAD. 
I remember when I was like 13 years old, my dad brought home an EMAD, and it was like the first time I'd ever seen a kick head with like the muffling ring on it, and it just sounded so damn good. Been using them ever since. I also have an EQ3 for the resonance side of the kick. I got a white one because I'm gonna draw on it. Well, just as expected, these drum heads sound amazing. They feel great too. Apparently this new UV coating doesn't wear off or doesn't get dirty or anything. So I'm excited about that. Everybody loves good, clean, new looking heads. I love getting new drum heads because it's like the most cost effective way to change the sound of your drums. Sometimes that's what is uninspiring. Like if you just have the same sounding kit all the time, and sometimes it just makes you not want to play really. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. But yeah, when you swap the heads out and your kit sounds different and it feels a bit different, then it's just like something new and exciting. So I'm really stoked to have some new heads on the kit. Big thanks to Evans for supporting the channel. Also thanks to Drumio for supporting the channel. If you guys want 30 days free of Drumio Edge, click the link in the description below. Now is probably the best time to do it because they just released all of their new coaches for this year. Who do we got? Simon Phillips, Dennis Chambers, Aaron Spears. I'll be watching that one for sure. For sure, bro. Peace, guys. Happy New Year.